Welcome to the Center of Light Radio with spiritual teacher, intuitive, musician, composer, and best-selling author of The Divine Principle, Anchoring Heaven on Earth, your host, Keith Anthony Blanchard. Yes, I am that guy. I am who he says I am. This is Keith Anthony Blanchard, your host, Center of Light Radio, Center of Divine Unfoldment and re enforcement strap in all ye spiritual astral knots as we launch for inner space i want to give a shout out to dana t in half moon bay california she said she was going to listen to the show today so i wanted to let her know that uh, i appreciate your presence here on center of light radio make sure you go to center of light radio.com check out this really cool website i'm really proud of the images i have there it's a really, uh, it's an eye appealing site. So make sure, but the, don't forget about the content. The content is really cool. The archives, the update of all the recent Center of Light shows. This is probably my fourth or fifth show, and I'm grateful to the Inception Network team. Uh, what a great team. It's, it's, I was just having a conversation with Joe in the radio green room. Uh, about the, the the beauty of just showing up to the microphone uh, and not having the angst and the stress that comes with uh, other radio platforms. But I'm grateful to Inception Radio Network. When you go to Center of Light uh, Radio website, um, make sure you check out all my creations, all my books, my bestseller, The Divine Principle, Anchoring Heaven on Earth, my children's book series modeled after my 10-year-old boy titled Eden Sky Wonders Why, and of course his name is Eden Sky, and my newest release about my pilgrimage to South India to hang out with a divine man, an avatar, came to me in a dream. Three months later after this dream, I'm on the way across the pond to South India to mix and mingle with this divine man. Um, this book is about my experience there, I brought a tape recorder and logged the entire journey. Phenomenal book. It's called For the Love of God, A Spiritual Journey. Also, you will find links from the centeroflightradio.com website um, to my other projects, Do What You Love, A Path to Passionate, uh, Path to Passionate Living, Spiritual Documentary Made About My Life. It's really about you, actually, telling you that you can move about the world, living your passion and be successful, whatever successful means to you. And finally, also there, uh, you will find uh, KeithAnthonyBlanchard.com links and make sure you check out the free Anchoring Heaven on Earth audio meditation. It's done by myself, really cool music. I do suggest you put some headphones on, check out the stereo imaging that happens, uh, the panning back and forth, really, really cool. Uh, also, remember that um, if you want to call into the show, you can dial 888-919-2355. Remember, if you're not at home and you want to hear your favorite show, you can go to the app store on your phone and download the Inception Radio Network app for free. Everything you need is at your fingertips. Chat room, listen, live links, news, podcasts, much more. And always remember, there are many ways to connect to Inception Radio Network. Now it's time to get down to Center of Light Radio Business. My guest today is Miss Maria Felipe, and we will be discussing it's an inside job. Maria says it's an inside job. We look for love, validation, and success outside. Even when we are spiritual, we do. I know, she says, I lived it. After reading hundreds of self-help books with no results, I finally found the missing ingredient. I will share what that is. When we put into practice, you, you will experience amazing results. Let me tell you a little more about my guest today. Maria Felipe is an ordained minister through Pathways of Light, which she uses to help people quiet their mind, hear their inner guidance, and connect to God. Maria has taken her love as a reverend and student of the Course in Miracles to create her own channel on YouTube by hosting Maria Coconut TV, a show geared towards inspiring, sharing, and expanding the message of love by interviewing other spiritual leaders. Her passion to inspire helped her start the first Spanish ministry at Unity of Burbank, where she always speaks on rotation at the English service. 
Maria also can be seen on TV, film, commercials, and modeling both nationally and internationally. Originally from Miami, as she would say, she moved to pursue her dreams in Hollywood as an actress and model. After great success in her field, she felt called inward. After a series of events in her life, she was encouraged to become a reverend at Pathways of Light based on A Course in Miracles and became ordained in November 2012. She had always been deeply moved by the teachings of A Course in Miracle and jumped in. Maria began sharing her message with the world, speaking in Greece, Mexico, and appearing on national television, CNN Latino, Coffee Break, and Two Vision Canal. 2015, Maria was a presenter at A Course in Miracles conference in New York. I want to welcome to the Center of Light Radio, Miss Maria Felipe. Hola. Awesome. Thank you for that introduction, Keith. I'm so happy to be here. I was, as I was saying before we got on the call, I always get very excited about sharing about all these concepts and love and happiness. So I'm excited to be here. Thank you. You in the last mm, <laughs> eight months, you have been one busy little bee. <laughs> well, I think globe that trotting, you actually call that the, remember? across the world. And I'm just wild at what you're doing. Tell me more about that, sweetie. Well, I think that you should share because um, I know that you we've talked in the past um, and you actually had told me, Maria, a lot of great things are going to happen for you. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, I do. I, I, I don't know how, Maria, when you and I had a conversation sometime back last year, um, you know, I wasn't thinking about doing intuition work for Maria. By God, I'm on the radio having a dialogue and it's like something cracked me open and said, in form of what's coming down the pike. And lo and behold, here it is. <laughs> yes, yes. And you had actually really told me you were like, Maria, a lot of great things are going to happen to you, happen for you. And um, you had actually mentioned that I would be traveling and things like that. So I think, you know, you're a little psychic there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, you know, and I, I don't I never found myself giving readings on the air, uh, especially publicly in case I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, I, I had no choice in the matter. It just came out. But I'm glad things are really, really moving for you. Um, I'm sure the traveling must be nice. I'm sure you, your heart's in what you're doing. So you just blissful day in and day out, I'm sure, living this passion of yours. Yes. Um, well, I live a life of trust, which I'll get into a little bit later, because that's one of the key, key things of really living a very happy and peaceful life is having trust. Um, it's not the typical trust that the society knows as a definition of trust. It's a different type of trust, which I'll go over. But um, I live a life of trust. So hence, um, things flow. And I wasn't really looking to travel. Um, it's not something that was in my agenda or I wasn't trying to make it happen. Um, but it came into my life and I really listened to symbols, um, and nudges. And I felt that that was, um, the way to, to go. And I have, I, as you had mentioned, I was at the course in miracles conference cause I, I am a course in miracles teacher and I was presenting in New York with other amazing, um, presenters as well. And it's just a wonderful opportunity to meet other people, especially at that conference. I think it, it was about, it was sold out. There was over 500 people there. So I was able to also meet students of mine that study with me in person. So that was nice because a lot of my students don't live in LA. And um, it's just so great to get out and to be able to share this message with, uh, with the world. And then last year, I was also in Greece for about a week doing a retreat there. And I was able to meet people from Greece. I was able to meet people from Switzerland you know, London, people in Europe. Um, so it's been wonderful to expand that way. I'm, I'm very grateful. And it's been going very well, as you can see. So thank you for letting me know what's going to happen before it happened, brother. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, like you said, you, you had no, no desire really to travel. Uh, parallel with that, I had no desire really to forecast your future on the air. So I think they were one and the same. I guess we both had to get out the way and let what was going to happen happen. So tell me, what is it you're, you're up to now? What are you into? What are you doing? Well, what I'm doing right now, I always say I'm extending love. That's what I like to do best. <laughs> so within extending love, I, I have a ministry here in Los Angeles. It's, it's at Unity of Burbank. I speak there. I'm a spiritual leader there. And I run the Spanish ministry there. What that means is that I basically founded it. And um, I speak there every first Sunday of the month. 
I also run a group actually tonight, um, Monday night here. It's a little earlier because we're in, I'm in LA time, um, of which I have a lot of course students, like about 20 that go to this group. And we talk about the Course in Miracles principles. And I also do one-on-one counseling here in my home. Um, but I also have a lot of students. I have a lot of ministerial students from Pathways of Light, which is based on the Course of Miracles. So there's a lot of people out there that want to become ministers, not to become ministers, to be a minister, mainly for, for inner growth, for understanding the Course better, understanding our inner journey. You know, I think that you had mentioned earlier our inner space which is such a beautiful concept (laughs) at the beginning. I was like, okay, I'm on the right show. That's for sure. Um, So that's what the courses are about is really about um, coming back to that inner space, which is where the true freedom lies. And that's what I've been doing. So I'm very busy with that. Um, I know that, you know, I do acting and hosting and I, and I still do that. Um, I'm getting back a little bit more back into that, but my ministry is taking a lot of my time, um, which I'm happy about because it's a very fulfilling purpose. It's different. It's a lot I, different. I've watched some of your commercials, the McDonald's commercials, and many, <laughs> many, many of the others. You are really good at it. I mean, you fit the role. You can you can morph it into any role. Um, when my guests come on the show and they bring up the, the word love, I will I always call them on it, so to speak. What is love to you? Because uh, this show, the Center of Light Radio, is truly about illuminating uh, the listening audience. Um, from people such as yourself who are walking the talk. So it, most people have an erroneous definition of what love actually is. And matter of fact, David Matthew Brown, our dear friend, was on the show last week, and he gave us his take um, very beautifully on love. What is love? What is this love that you give? Love. Well, the first thing that comes up for me is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to expand on it, of course, but it is, it's a great question. When I think of love, I just think of love. So it's that space, right? The space that exists now, it's just, it is, right? Um, But to expand on it, um, the Course in Miracles, which is is what I study and what I teach, would say that love is, you know, there's so many characteristics within love, which is love, the love that I, that what love means to me is that there's no conditions. There's no judgments within love. Um, There's full acceptance. Um, Love is not exclusive. It's inclusive. Those are all characteristics of what love is for me. Now, at all times, how can we live that love? Because you're saying, how do we walk the talk? Well, it's very important self-love, which is how are we being with ourselves? What thoughts are we thinking? You know, constantly for me, it's the second within the second. Saying to myself, what thoughts of love can I have about myself now? So what thought, what, what, what would be a thought of love? A thought of love would be, I am whole. I am complete. I am perfect. A thought that's not coming from love would be, I am separate. I'm not enough. So there's all, we're constantly thinking all the time. So I think that one of the ways to, to live a loving life, to live that love is to be aware of your thoughts. What are you choosing? What loving thoughts are you having about yourself? What loving thoughts are you having about another without lifting a finger? Right? I mean, I can send, I can think love, a lot of loving thoughts about my dad. I mean, I, I think my dad's listening today. Hopefully. Hi, daddy, if you're listening. <laughs> um, he's in Miami, but I can, even though I'm not with him, I can share my love for him in my mind. So I can send him love in my mind. Um, I think about him in a loving way. Versus in any judgment type of way. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And I, I agree with all your uh, definitions, descriptions of love. It's non judgmental, it's allowing, there are no conditions. You know, like I said with David last week, a lot of people think love is this emotional sentiment that you have for someone in relationship. It, it, that is only the very superficial layer of the onion, and it goes much, much deeper than that. And one of, in your definition of love, you describe this wholeness. I saw recently on Facebook, someone posts, um, scientists discovered, scientists believe that the universe is a hologram. Well, of course it's a hologram. If you look up the definition of hologram, um, in every fragment of this hologram is the whole. And so if you look to scripture and God is omnipresent, uh, definition of omnipresent, present in all places at all times. So that means the wholeness is inherent in every fragment. 
So just like a hologram, there's light in every fragment making the whole in you know, a multifaceted universe. You did you do some work recently or in the past with Michael Beckwith? Is that right? Michael Beckwith? No, Myth I know of I know of him. I know of him, but no, the one that I think did work with him was David. It was David? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I haven't done work with him. So tell me about trust. You were going to get into the subject of trust in a much deeper way than we probably know trust to be. Tell me about that. Yay, this is going to be fun. Are you ready? <laughs> I got my bathing suit on and I'm ready to dive in. I'm on a high diving board waiting for you to leave. <laughs> I love your sense of humor, Keith. Um, tr <laughs> you, know, you know, this is what I, I love about spirituality too. You know, I always tell people it's fun, it's joyful. You know, let's have a good time, right? Um, trust. So the worldly trust that we're taught what trust is, you know, what we would say trust is, is, um, I trust you. I'm, I'm using you as an example. Okay, Keith. So I trust you because you've behaved well, or, um, I trust you because, um, I have, G I have Jesus and you don't, or it's like this whole, I trust you because you're a certain way, right? This is the type of trust that some, sometimes the world, the concept, the world thinks the concept is mm. the trust that I'm talking about is a trust that is a trust of that inner space. I'm going back to that word because I really like that you use that. <laughs> um, a trust of that inner wisdom. A trust in really knowing that everything comes from within and you're guided fully. And my work, the type of work that I do with my students is that um, I'm just facilitating them and them being able to release all the barriers so that they can listen to their internal teacher. Because we all have the answer within us, every single one of us, nobody's different. We all have a, a voice, a divine voice that knows exactly what to say, what to do, where to be, everything. It completely guides you if, if you're willing to listen. Um, so it's that, it's that trust. Within that trust is to really letting go of having to manipulate things or having to make anything happen. Because when you are trusting, it just happens. And within that trust, you also let go of things being a big deal because you know that everything is perfect exactly how it is. So if you receive some bad news in the mail, you won't make it mean anything because you trust and you know that that's not the truth about you. And you trust that self that knows that you're going to be all right. So that's, it's very, very powerful. And it's so, really changed my experience. That's why I share about it a lot. So equally said differently, everything is a big deal. <laughs> um, so are you saying that trust is the key? It's the master key that unlocks the door to guidance. I would say. I would say it's an element of it. I would say the master key would be peace. Why? Because we must come back to a state of peace so we're able to listen. And um, there's a lot of people that always say, oh, you know, I, I want this and then I'll have peace. Or if I have that, I'll have peace. But our goal is always peace first. So it's always, at least for me, you know, I have no problem saying the word God, God but I always say, you know, all I want is a peace of God. It's a very powerful statement. It's not only saying it, it's really willing and open to wanting that. Because when, you're, when your desire, when your goal is only, I want the peace of God, if, if people you know, don't feel comfortable with the word God, that's fine. You can say love, light, you know, inner space, whatever you want. Just the whole, <laughs> the point, the whole point is, is I want peace. I want the peace of love. I want the peace of light. I want peace. Because if that's your goal, and you have that peace. Nothing outside is is going to define you. So, oh, I have yeah. this and I have peace. Does that make you, sense? Yes, you become the rock. If you would, um, what is the mission statement for Unity Church? Here, herein lies the peace of God. What is that piece of wisdom right there that that, that Unity is famous for? Here lies the peace of God. Um, there's so many. It's I, I, there's this whole thing about oneness before we say that it's I, I think I, it's actually the song at the end 
There's a lot of, a, a couple of phrases before that. Um, here lies the peace of God is when we are coming back to the truth of who we are. That's what brings us back to the peace of God. And what does that mean? Because a lot of people will be like, okay, Maria, what the heck are you talking about? Uh, there, um, was one, there was one particular <laughs> thing that said in unity, uh, at least unity is here. Um, I'm enfolded by divine consciousness, da, 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 da. And herein lies the peace of God. It's just so awesome. And it's so to the point. Yeah. Um, well, I, I remember when we say it at the end, for me, it's, it's very powerful because it's letting go of all the fear. It's letting go of all, all the barriers basically is that that's where the peace of God lies. Cause what, what blocks us from having the peace of God is our fear. Um, what blocks us from having the peace of God is our attachment to wanting to be separate Right. It's it, and it's our attachment to to believing we're separate. So it's very important. That's why unity, it's unity, right? It's oneness. Mm. Um, as we constantly are coming back to that oneness and realize that we're all in this together, we, we have peace. And one of the biggest ingredients for this, for you to really have the key to that peace. And I know you were saying earlier the, the key to trust, right? Um, which we, I can get into that in a second, but the key to peace would be to recognize, okay, are you ready for this? <laughs> <laughs> to recognize that everything outside of you is coming from you. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It could be good. It could be, it, it could, it could appear to be good. Like what society would say be, be good or, or bad, whatever it is. Everything, the cause is within you. The course would say, and the effect is outside. So we're living a world of cause and effect and we're constantly projecting. So we come back to our peace when we realize that no matter what, how we're seeing our brother, right? The, per the, the person that's standing in front of us is, is ultimately how we are seeing ourselves. And that is huge because a lot of people feel that that's separate and it's not, it's a mirror. It's everything is coming from, from us. And I feel that that's something very hard for people to grasp because they see a lot of chaos out there sometimes. And they're like, oh my God, wow. Like I created that. And I say, yeah, you did. <laughs> not <laughs> exactly. And it's not so much like you're creating it physically is that you're creating your experience of it. So you can experience it through joy or pain and you can experience it through the filter that you're seeing it through. Yeah. So that. Key. That is so key. And that is when I understood that and I started living that, um, I was free. And, you know, it's not like, it's not like a half ass thing, um, Keith, like, oh, you know, um, I'm going to trust a little bit, you know, I'm going to trust, but I'm going to worry. Right. Or I want peace, but I still want to run the show. Everything needs to be in alignment. Mm. You, know? you know, it has to be in alignment. It's no, but it's, I trust. And I trust fully, period. You know? People often ask the question, why? Of course, the likely response would be, because. Well, when you look at the word because, we are not human doings, we are human beings. So, in other words, be is the cause. How we are being is the cause. So, the question, when it arises, why, be cause um i wanted to ask you so i like, love that i yeah, love that i had not heard that before yes i, I yeah. haven't either till just this moment <laughs> <laughs> uh b cause um here's keith blanchard i'm new in the spiritual path and i hear this uh awesome lady telling me all this spiritual stuff about trust and letting go and i get it i get the mechanics of it and I, I, at least i understand what you're saying it's in my head not in my heart yet um, and I, I understand it. How do I find the switch? How do I let go? How do I trust? Now, this is a very, very important question because, you know, you can tell us all you want. Um, you know, this is what you need to do, but how? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Really, I love. I, I, I'm really, really loving your questions because um, I'm all about the practicality of it. I haven't really got into it that much yet, but um, the pra practicing it, living it, um, how the how, right? Um, 
Wow. Okay. There's a lot of things, but I'm going to start with something and then we'll see where it goes. <laughs> um, <laughs> one thing, one thing is that came up to me was, um, I could identify with that Keith. And I think you wrote that in, in the presentation of what I was going to present today. Um, because even though I was spiritual and I've been studying the course of miracles and I've been into this kind of spiritual journey since I was very young, um, since I was about 16 and I remember studying so much, and I'm sure a lot of people here could relate to um, reading self-help books or probably seeing Oprah or, or reading a bunch of books and um, not really seeing any results, you know, or, or they might, you might feel good for a few days or you might feel good after you read that book, but after it's like, you don't feel great. It's not really working. Um, and I realized that that was happening to me. I was going to a course group once a week and I was listening to these beautiful things. And then I would come back to my life and I would be destructive because my life wasn't in, tw- in alignment to what I was studying. I think a lot of the things we read and it becomes in- into the intellect, like you just said now, but we don't fully live them. Um, examples on how to live them. I mean, they're very simple. Um, I'll give you an example of one thing of living it. Um, for instance, myself, I had had, um, I didn't pay my, um, corporate taxes, I think like two years ago on time. And I got a letter from the IRS. You know, I got the letter, the letter did not disturb me. That's what living this is. Um, the letter, I didn't make it mean anything, but that it was a letter and that from that space, I would do the proper steps to get it resolved. And I did, and it worked out perfectly. Um, there's, there's so many stories like that in the sense of you live this by when you are approached with, um, with a circumstance and you choose the, the correct teacher, um, within our minds. So the course would say, and, and this is not, I, I'm not saying this is the truth. I'm just saying that this is my experience that we have two teachers that are running the show within, which is fear, love, Holy spirit or e- ego, Holy spirit or ego, excuse me. And we're constantly choosing either or. So we have to pay attention to, if we want to live this stuff is what, who, who is running the show here? Is it, is it the, the voice of love or is it the voice of fear? Now, um, usually, usually the, I don't interrupt. That, that was a very, very key piece right there. Very, very key. That was the answer I was fishing for. And I was, <laughs> I was, I was really not going to let this question go with you, not to challenge you, but to help fish out with, Honestly, Marie, and you did a fantastic job with it, that most people, many guests that I've interviewed in the past, somewhat even including myself, would have a difficult time bringing to the fore, and you did it lovely. And how was the question, and I was going to st- keep pressing on that, how? But yeah, Keith, you have to let go, and no, no, but how? How does one let go? We understand the idea of letting go. You can put my hand on the doorknob, but how does one begin to turn it? And I think you just revealed that by saying that. Who yes. is running the show? Yeah. Love or fear? Mm-hmm. Is it love or fear? And that way you can determine who's running the show. It's a little more easy for us to determine and to understand the dynamic of what's moving in within. Well, it's simply, I can say, well, I'm in love mode. I, I, I have a clear understanding of what love is. And I think I'm definitely in that mode. Oh, I can see that I have some, some reservations. I'm having some concerns. So now I'm in fear. So now someone has a very key component to be able to meander through the dynamic that moves within to help them move towards trusting, letting go, faith, whatever word you choose. Very well done. Back to peace. Yeah, back to peace. Well, I, I thank you, Keith. And the reason I feel that it was, you know, that that you liked it was because I, I was coming from a pace of experience because I literally went through that. I literally went through that. So I know how I was able to, you know, switch up that, that key. But also I feel that it's very important to, um, also remember the love you gave and the love you gave, the love you gave and the love that was given in the past. I feel that a lot of suffering comes from, I could have, I would have, I should have, I wish I would have done it better some ions ago. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> what happens is a lot of people suffer. And I know, cause I see in a lot of my clients and myself as well, that, you know, they're, they're still worried about or upset about something that happened and they wish it could be different. And when you think about it, I mean, let's just really think about it right now on the radio today, right now, this moment, think about it. Like we really can't do anything about what happened in the past. So it's very delusional. And that would be the ego speaking to us. The ego, that would be the ego part. The fear part would be like, oh, you should have done it better. or you didn't do it right. 
um, you know, you, 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 you're, you know, you could have made a different decision. If you would have done it like this, this wouldn't be happening right now. Right. The, the Holy spirit, the love within you would say you did the best you could with the awareness you had at that moment. You did the best you could with the awareness you had at that moment. And that is a beautiful thing to say, because you're cutting yourself some slack. You're loving yourself. That's self-love. That's really mm. loving yourself and saying, Hey, you know what? I really did the best I could. And you, you begin again, you choose again. And I, and I think that that's very important because I feel, especially when we're spiritual, we tend to be a little bit hard on ourselves. Like you have to be perfect. And this is not, not about being perfect. This is really about constantly choosing again, the love you are and doing the best you can. And sometimes we're going to be appears, it appears that we're going to be really good at it. And sometimes it's not, (laughs) but that's okay. That's okay. So you know, I think another uh, reflecting board, sounding board would be if, you know, if you cannot determine within you what this space of love is. Uh, often when we uh, do something uh, for someone, we think we're just being nice. But if you can reflect in your life when you did something that was just not cool or even just being, you know, an everyday situation, when someone really supports you, someone really shows you love someone really makes you feel safe cradled nurturing uh, supportive when someone is helped instill that feeling in you because of their presence and what they have done for you or said to you be that way to yourself are you being that way to yourself when the dynamic and thoughts begin to move one way that you could find the letting go process the trusting process the, the love versus fear is are you being that way with yourself? We're at the bottom of the hour, Maria. Would you give us your contact information so our listening audience can find more about you and your awesomeness? <laughs> sure. My, my <laughs> website, you're great. My website is Maria, M-A-R-I-A, Felipe, F-E-L-I-P-E dot org. People can go there and sign up for my inspirational emails. And I have an awesome channel on YouTube called Maria Coconut TV. And people can see all my talks there that I've given live. They're all available for free. And also a lot of interviews that I've done here in Los Angeles of local spiritual leaders. So that um, every there's definitely a lot of tools on there. So those will be the two resources for everybody to find me. What else are you working with? What other subjects, what other contents are you bringing to your classes? Now, I know that doing this as long as you have. You've covered just about probably every spiritual topic. And of course, as time goes by and we become more expanded inside and we grow ourselves, those lessons get deeper and much broader. Do you find yourself hitting on a certain few in your recent past that you feel are congruent? Um, most, Most important one would be trust in letting go that we just mentioned. So we are able to hear the guidance. We move the blocks. When we move the blocks, we become a conduit. Um, for higher expression to come through into our consciousness, and therefore we can uh, act accordingly. But do you find yourself uh, leaning on certain subjects more so now than the plethora of things that you've shared in your teachings throughout your past? Well, I'll begin by saying that my fuel is and always has been till now um, is the Course of Miracles. That's my fuel and everything that is within that book is, is usually where I share and where I come from. I mean, I have that book on my night table. I have it right now in front of me as I do this talk. Um, because I, because it, it shares on what I'm speaking, which is a world of cause and effect, uh, being responsible. You're not a victim of the world that you see. Because. Huh? Excuse me? Because. (laughs) Because. Yes. Because. (laughs) Um, so that's my fuel. You know I mean? I would say the course of miracles is my fuel now. Um, My work is to, to live it. And I think that that's all of our work. And I'm not saying the course of miracles because not, it's not for everybody. You know, if if you, if it calls you, then that's fine. But I'm saying whatever it is that anyone out there listening today is, um, is guided to, or maybe Buddhism, or I'm not sure whatever it is that resonates with you, um, to give yourself the opportunity to embody that fully. Um, for me, that's been the course because it resonates with me. Um, you know, uh, one of the biggest symbols I have is is the whole thing that you're talking about, the because, right? Um, you know, if you're looking at a movie and you are no longer liking the movie you're seeing at the movie theater, you know, most of 
the most the way that we function a lot of us is that we're kicking the screen we're trying which 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 means that we're trying to change the things out there right we're trying to change the boyfriend we're trying to change the coworker we're trying to change our boss versus from looking within and and asking holy spirit to change our perception of this person and going into the right mind because if not then we're kicking and, and pulling on the screen and this is why we get exhausted because the change is never out there again that's why the show today is called going within is is it's never out there ever 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 that's the point that i can make in this show is that is that it's never out there what we go is if you want to change the movie you go up the stairs <laughs> and you go to the projector and you change the film that's projecting the movie that would be our thoughts so if you want to experience a different ex- experience in your world you must realize that no matter what it's coming from you and i think that that's a lot it's very i think it's it takes something for people to understand that because it's hard to fully accept and be responsible for all that caca do you know what caca is <laughs> <You crap. laughs> stop <laughs> i'm not going to say it but if you guys look it up okay all that caca that is outside that that we project outside and we don't want to own it you see we don't want to own it we want to project it and then we want to blame outside oh because of so and so i'm upset or this happened because of so and so versus which is so it's not powerful you know um i i'm constantly i realized that earlier in my years even when i was spiritual i was giving away my power i was giving away my power to men especially that was my big one because i wouldn't make men my idol men were everything for me men were my god and i wasn't happy because my happiness is never going to come from anything outside of me happiness is never going to come out come from anything outside of us because that's not where it resides it's within us all the time we need to have the courage and the strength and how i would say los cojones to 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 choose that <laughs> to choose that <laughs> um something from the divine principle that is so in alignment with what you said from my first book it says uh Let's see. Each evening just before you go to sleep, think about what did not align with your morning's visualizations and be grateful for all that did. Then ask for the clarity to fine tune your prayers and intentions so that tomorrow will be a better day. As soon as you can determine what to do and what not to do in any situation, living a peaceful life will become second nature. Keith, you have always have had creative power. What has kept you from maximizing it is the cluttered mind. Why not look at the creative process like this? You are a you are a movie projector and God is the light inside. Your thoughts are the film itself. As you sit in the theater of life, what movie is playing on that 3D screen of yours? A horror flick? If so, change the film. The simple fact is that conscious of it or not, you are the producer and director of your own movie, and any sad or, un- or unfinished scene in it will only become more difficult for you to wrap if you do not take responsibility for its content. If your life is your life playing out the way you want it to, if not, the only way to get it to go the way you truly desire is to do the work necessary and get clear about it. That's the crux of it. No more, no less neither good nor bad your life is the movie you make it's another way of saying what i just expressed (laughs) yes so the idea (laughs) as you said yes the idea is that you know the creator lives inside each and every one of us pure white light and the filters we have emotions thoughts belief systems um especially when that light becomes you know begins to move through us and express itself through us and as we emanate in the world you know, it, it becomes manifested in our 3D reality. So y- there is no reason whatsoever that we need to go outside to say, OK, if only you would do this, if only you wouldn't do this, <laughs> my life would become the song or the movie that I really want. And, you know, and I, I, I'm for the idea of expressing and sharing your thoughts with someone. Could you meet me halfway in this dynamic we call whatever the relationship may be? And if they listen to your ideas and have uh, thoughts for you in that way, then things can change um, by verbal, by, by conversation. 
but the whole point of it all is really it's a manifestation of yourself and that manifestation can come about through such conversations but the point is the work solely lies with you mm-hmm. yep inner space you know you said at the beginning again yeah, we go inner back space. to inner space i love that by the way you know you have me saying it all the time yeah. um yes absolutely absolutely and what I was, I was, you were saying something. And I was like, oh, wow, I want to really bring this up. Um, hopefully I can't, forget, I don't want to forget what it was. But um, going back to what you were saying in regards to um, going within is because like you said, I, I call it automatic pilot or being transed out. All the examples you were sharing on if this person will be different or if that would be different, I would be happy. Um, it's kind of how we've been taught and grow, grow up in society, you know, that when, you know, we go to school, we get a degree where we'll be happy or we've been taught if we have this certain car, then we're, 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 we'll be successful. Or if I get married or I have kids, then, then that's the ultimate and I have the white picket fence, then that would be mean happiness for me. And I'm not saying that those things are bad or, or, or that we, we wouldn't look forward to that. Although we must understand that our happiness is not coming from outside, which is what we just shared. And ultimately, if your goal is always peace, which is how we started the show today, um, you're going to be happy if if you have the car or not. If your goal is peace, you, you know, you're going to be happy if you have the relationship or not, because that doesn't define you. You're defini- you're, def- you're not defined by what's outside. You're defined. Like, for instance, I, I'm defined by God. Like God defines me, period. Um, I'm not defined by anything outside of me. Now, I, I, I want everybody to be clear because I feel that sometimes what we do is a lot of people use these types of things to try to manifest. Like, oh, so I'm going to start thinking this way so I can manifest this or I can have that. Um, what I teach is not so much about creating outside anything. I think that's something that just happens naturally. Um, I think it's important that it's it's it's, for instance, it's not, I always say, may it be God's will and not my will. I, it seems that I want certain things because I'm, I'm, because it appears I'm in a body. So I'll be like, oh, you know, I will love this or I will love that. But I always give it over. This is an exercise that I do that I put it on an altar. Everything that I think I need because I'm in this body and I give it over to God. You lay it at God's feet. I do. <laughs> and I, and I, and I give it to him fully saying, may it be your will and not my will. And I get out of the way because I'm not sure what is the highest and best. But what I want is I want the highest and best for myself and my brother. And usually that's getting out of my way and letting God's will be done. So I do that. That's how I live my life, basically. You know, guilt, guilty as charged. Um, spiritual people. And, and it's a great idea to, to align and make yourself congruent with higher consciousness. So you can, you know, enjoy the things that your embodiment here on this earth has to offer and guilty as charged, meaning that, you know, I still do find myself leaning into the idea that, you know, if I do more work then I can do have a little more of this or do a little of that. But the higher mind creation knows exactly beyond even what you think is your best case scenario. So the idea is not having any expectation whatsoever. And I loved your idea of putting things on the altar. God, you know, this would be really, really cool. I love the idea of playing with these things. And I'm just going to set it here and I'm just going to let this go. <laughs> you know, that's really cool. A friend of mine by the name of Andy, one of the most amazing human beings I've ever met. He's uh, he's uh, an avid Course in Miracles guy. Uh, he starts his morning up with Course in Miracles. He's read the book six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever times. And he recently had a situation where his vehicle was broken and all of his musical gear was taken. And he immediately went to prayer and says, show me what it is. I'm not seeing, (laughs) Uh, you know, heighten my perception. And, you know, three days later, this most amazing manifestation in his life happened. Not only did he acquire all the equipment he lost, but because of a benefit that was put on for him because of uh, he you know, recaptured everything that was taken plus multiple thousands of dollars to help support him uh, in his future endeavors um, being a professional musician. So I'm very much aware of the process of letting go. And that brings us back to where we started some time ago uh, during the show is letting go. You know, in my path, 
in past as well, but when I, when I do teachings, when I do present public presentations, I've been, ha- I've had that question put to me in a such a way. And I in turn put it to you. How do you let go? Um, you know, like on the matrix, you know, I can only show you the door, but you have to open it. And it's not so much really knowing how to turn on the light switch, even though your hand may be on it and I placed it there or you've placed it there, or how to twist the doorknob. Your intentions to want to do that is mm. what's going to bring about the whole program step by flawless step. Your job is to intend. I intend Intention is everything. To me, intention is just, a, to use your word, fuel. It's just as much a high grade fuel as passion. Um, you know, God, you know, if you have intention and passion aligned, wow, what manifesting power do you have when I say manifest, not only in the terms of what you're bringing about in your life as far as details or the car or the boyfriend or the girlfriend, but I'm talking about the manifestation of that which reflects the joy that lives with inside of you. Good. And, good point. Happy, happy you say it like that. <laughs> intention, intention, intention. It's all intention. Whether you know that you are intending or not, you are intending. Mm-hmm. So the trick is you might as well just become conscious. Yeah. Aware. Aware of becoming aware, getting out of that trance because that, that automatic pilot, I feel like sometimes we run like kind of like a puppet. You know, it's being aware. Aware of what, what are you thinking? Uh, be really present every, again, every, the second within a second, if you want to practice every day is be aware of your thoughts. How, what am I thinking? And you'll know what teacher you're listening into because you'll realize by if you're at peace or not, if you're not feeling at peace, it's almost for sure that you are not in alignment to your thoughts of truth. And you have every right to get off that train and say, no, and say, no, I'm willing I'm willing to feel better. No, I'm willing to stop these thought patterns now and choose again and choose a love that I am. And again, you begin again. And that's, that should be, at least that's my daily practice of being aware of my thoughts. And again, what you just mentioned in regards to really, really wanting it, really wanting to turn that key, the intention to do that, I feel is the key thing. And I'm so, I love, and it's so beautiful that you brought that up, Keith, because I feel that's so helpful is to really be willing. And the Course in Miracles says, all you need is a little bit of willingness and miracles happen. And just so you know, miracles on a Course in Miracles is a change of perception from fear to love. So if you're constant, if you're willing, and I'm not saying like, oh, so, so willing, you know, it's like willing, I am willing. (laughs) That makes a huge difference because I feel, again, we're like, I am love. I am love, right? And oh, it's so beautiful. I am love, but I want to tell off the next person on the street, right? (laughs) (laughs) It's so so contrast instead of I am love, period. And, and, and and and, And then what is an alignment to that, right? I have a friend of mine right now that she's going through a hard time with her with her, um, her husband. And, you know, it's not really even about him. It's about her thoughts about herself and her self-love and what, what is an alignment to the love that you are is what I'm constantly sharing with her is, is the actions that are going on in in alignment to the love that you are, you know, you know, what's a loving action. We all know that, right? So it's constantly doing that work. And being willing, like I am abundance. It's not a period. I am abundance. That's who I am. It's my birthright. It's my divinity. You know, I'm the perfect child of God. I am abundance versus I am abundance, but I want to worry about my bills. You see, it's, it, there's, 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 there has to be aligned. That, that is something else that helped me as well um, to bring it into my, into every cell of my body of the experience that I'm having in this, in this dream in this very interesting dream of life. <laughs> you know, like you said, uh, I, w- I am abundance, but anytime you insert the word, but you negate everything you said. If you, if a person can just catch themselves or monitor themselves for the day, one day, uh, do your best to stay present with that. How often you say the word, but, you know, the, for me, the trick is when you become conscious of your consciousness, you, be, you create a feedback loop. Anyone knows that if you take a microphone and you put it, put it in front of a speaker, it creates this feedback. It's called a loop. And so what happens is you begin to curve the sound that's going into the microphone out of the speaker, out of the speaker into the microphone. And, and 
continually. And so what happens, it creates with this noise that you hear a feedback loop. So when you become aware of your awareness, conscious of your consciousness, likewise, uh, you create this feedback loop, this quote noise or this tone. And boy, things really, <laughs> really begin to step up. But I also know that for you, Marie, just like me, there is no way even if you wanted to, even if you tried, that you can stop or shut this process of spiritual growth off, can you? No. Wow. It's impossible. Yeah, that's, that's a beautiful <laughs> comment. Yeah, it is because you know why? I and, and the reason is because you because we realize that it works. Um, and we feel so much better and there's so much freedom and there's so much more peace. I feel that that's why. And, and I, I always tell people, you know, don't believe what I say this, you know, even, even don't even believe the course of miracles if you don't want, but put it into practice. And then you tell me, tell me what you think, <laughs> because I think that when you begin to understand these principles, but more than just understand them, you live them fully with your relationship with yourself and hence the relationship with others, you will begin to live a life like no other. Um, and I'm testimony to that because like every, like everyone, you know, I could relate to suffering. I could relate to, um, you know, having ups and downs, like one day I'll feel good. And then the next day I'll feel down. Um, and I realized that with the spiritual practice and consistency and my setting my intentions, right. What you were saying earlier, um, there's a stability in my life, a stability in my life. So. Mm. Yeah. In parallel with you, that's exactly what happened to me, uh, many years ago. When my girlfriend of 10 years left and I was in that, oh gosh, that dark, sticky place, uh, a friend of mine or acquaintance at the time said, Keith, let me offer you some ideas. He whispered these metaphysical things in my ear and he says, I don't expect you to believe them. He said, in fact, I, I don't believe them, but you put into practice the things I'm telling you and watch what happens that day, that week, that month, that year. I curved back within myself, that feedback loop, and then miracles were happening left and right. And of course, the more you believe when you see something like that, your conviction goes up. And when your conviction goes up, more the the outside reflects that. And when it reflects that, your conviction goes up. And this back and forth dynamic begins to expand. And next thing you know, you know, a year or so into your life from doing the requisite work in our space, your life, be, you won't even recognize the person that you were uh, in your recent past just before you done uh, what is required of you to become a peaceful, blissful individual. Maria, we are coming to the top of the hour, which is the end of the show, sadly, because I love your presence. <laughs> would you give us a final thought? Um, I would like to share actually a prayer that I love from The Course of Miracles, which I find helpful. And it goes like this. I am here only to be truly helpful. I'm here to represent him who sent me. I don't have to worry about what to say or what to do because he who sent me will direct me. I am content to be wherever he wishes, knowing he goes there with me. I will be healed as I let him teach me to heal. Amen. Very, very, very awesome. What is yeah. God to you? God to me is divine. It's um, a presence within me that is bigger than this body that can't even, you can't even put it into words because it's so great. <laughs> yeah, right. Because it's so great. Like it has nothing to do with littleness at all. It's just, it goes beyond the cells of my body. It's bigger than anything. Um, and it's something I feel that can't really be spoken in a word. It's experienced fully when you're willing to be, when you're willing to. You know, I've often played with the idea every once in a while, I'll watch Oprah and at the end of her show, she'll ask her guests, um, what is God to you? And I've often pictured, not if, but when I appear on the Oprah show, uh, when she puts that question to me, I'm just going to stand up and give her a hug. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember the movie? You remember the movie Cocoon? I do. And, you know, within those cocoons, I feel that 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 presence what we're in there that we're always taken care of, you know, that we're in that space. And we're perfect, whole, and complete, and, and that we're completely taken care of within that space is, I feel, what, what God is. It's just, it, we're, always, we're always in it. And um, you can't describe it because it's what we are. <laughs> it's exactly what we are. Before we go, Maria, would you give out your contact information once again so our listeners can find you and your awesomeness? Yes, thank you so much. Um, you can reach me at my website, which is mariafelipe.org. 
and YouTube is Maria Coconut TV. Um, I would love to have you all subscribe to um, on my website, MariaFelipe.org, for my spiritual newsletter. Um, everybody, a lot of people find it helpful. So feel free to sign up and I'll get those to you right away. So thank you. By very the way, much. Th- that's a very awesome looking website. I know. I, I wasn't sure if I would mention it or not, if I could, so I wasn't. <laughs> but yes, Keith did my website. <laughs> Just playing. <laughs> Thank you. That door, that yes. door, the Center of Light radio door swings open to you anytime, love. Thank you. It was a pleasure. And um, it was very, um, how do I say this, rewarding because it's in alignment to to what I'm sharing in the world. So thank you for the inner space, for thank the inner you, space. Chat with you soon. Everyone, Maria Felipe, what a wonderful guest here on Center of Light Radio. Before we close the show, I want to read you a little bit. Just a bit ago, Maria was talking about contrast. And this is a chap from the chapter of the Divine Principle. It's called Sandwiched Between God and the Devil. Fear contracts, love expands. Fear works from outside to inside, love from inside to outside. Fear is the taker, it draws everything into itself and gives nothing. Fear takes what it can, when it can, to feed a hunger that can never be satisfied. Fear creates judgment, which creates separation. All that love does is give. It nourishes itself, yet has infinite leftovers to offer everyone and everything. Love is never hungry. Love creates acceptance, which creates unity. Love is a fountain of wealth that is endless, eternal. Keith Anthony Blanchard here with Center of Light Radio. Make sure you join me next week with my guest, Anya Traha. And we're going to be called, uh, the show's going to be called Opening Love. I'm looking forward to that show. I got some really cool, powerful guests coming down the pike. Make sure you stay tuned here at Center of Light Radio. Monday night, 6 p.m. Eastern, daylight time. Make sure you go to centerofLightRadio.com for all uh, your Keith Anthony Blanchard cool stuff that you can find There. Remember, when you lay down for bed at night, when you take those breaths, the intention of shifting to inner space. Who you truly are lies just behind that breath. Always remember, ease into bliss. Spread the light.